Hello. The title of today's recording is Minimal Surfaces and Maximal Oil Recovery. I'm going to share some of the latest discoveries or analysis that we have developed about flow in porous media, flow in mixed wet porous media. But I'm actually going to start with a very simple demonstration. I've got a, I've got a mug here and I've got water and I put some washing up liquid in the water and I'm well, I'm not going to blow bubbles, but I have some rings that I'm going to dip into the soap. And I'm going to take these rings out and then we're going to demonstrate as follows. So here, if you look carefully, you can see that we've got soap rings. Now, as I move these two circles apart, you see that the film is not just flat, it's curved because it's spanning between these two circles. So I've got these two circles like this. Okay, these two circular things, and they've got a, a soap film on them. But now if I put them together and move them apart, you see you've got a curved interface between these two rings. Okay, curved interface. You can, do, you can do this yourself at home. Now, these types of interfaces have fascinated mathematicians for hundreds of years. Now, now why is that? Well, look carefully at these rings. These surfaces have a curvature this way because they're these two rings. Look carefully, they weren't flat films, they were curved in the other direction. And we presented the young Laplace equation before. Actually, the pressure difference on either side of this interface is zero. So the mean curvature must also be zero. So these are interfaces where they're curved in one direction and in an equal and opposite way in the other direction. So the average curvature is zero. And these are called minimal surfaces. And we see them in lots of other applications here, just from the garden is a holly leaf. A holly leaf is not completely flat, but if again, you look carefully at it, it's curved in one direction and curved in the other direction. So the average curvature of the leaf is zero, but it's not Flat. It's not completely flat. Soap films can be flat. They can also be curved. You might say, okay, fair enough. What's this got to do with flow in porous media? Now what I'll do is I'll show you a short presentation which illustrates that. So here we have at the bottom some pictures, some three-dimensional x-ray images of the interface between oil and water in a rock, in this case, in a sandstone. And the one on the uh, left there is a water wet system where you have blobs of oil trapped in the pore space in a sort of semi-spherical shape. And there, both radii of curvature are positive. And then that is um, what is actually shown here in this graph. Here is the curvature and then the frequency you've measured all the points on the surface. And the curvature of the water wet case is positive. It's like, a, it's like a sphere, it's like a bubble that I've blown. The mixed wet cases, and I've got two cases here just to show you it's not some sort of fluke from one experiment. You've got a range of curvature. The average is almost exactly zero. But as you can see in the pictures, these are not flat interfaces between oil and water. They are curved one way, and an equal and opposite way the other. Okay, so we have two equal and opposite curvatures. So the definition of a minimal surface is as follows. It is an interface that minimizes its surface area when it is attached, pinned to certain locations like the, the two soap rings or an interface in a porous medium where you have an interface that's stuck to the surface. And those are minimal surfaces, they will have a zero average of capillary pressure, they will have a zero average curvature, um, and they do minimize energy. So we see them in lots of examples. The picture there is, uh, is the holly leaf that I've, I've already shown. You see these in emulsions, most famously in soap films, bone structure, and it's even been used to inspire building design. Okay? And what it implies in this graph here is. Here we show a water wet system. Here is the curvature. The curvature is positive. 
And then what I've also shown is cases where both radii have curved triggers. So it's curved like this and it bulges in both directions. And most of the interfaces are like that. So that's what's shown. There are a few interfaces that seem to be curved in two opposite directions, but they're very infrequent. And of course, an almost negligible number that have, the, have a negative curve. But for the mixed wet system shown here, the average curvature is approximately zero. And virtually all of these interfaces have this curvature in both directions. So let's just explore what the implications are. This is really reasonably simple. So here are as two pictures of two famous minimal surfaces. Actually, for quite some time, these were the only analytic forms of minimal surfaces. So the one um, there is a catenoid. It's actually the shape, a catenary is the shape that a wire or a string would assume between two points. A catenoid is where you rotate it. So there's the equation of a catenoid. The colors there indicate what's called the Gaussian curvature, which is the product of the two curvatures. And that's negative and it's most negative right, in the sort of dip of that catenoid. And it's a shape, of course, it's the same as the shape of the film between those two soap rings that I showed at the beginning of the presentation. So that's an equation for a catenoid. Um, the other shape here is a helicoid. Okay, fascinating mathematically, um, what does it mean? Well, this integral here is the integral of the Gaussian curvature over a surface. And it's proportional to what's called the Euler characteristic. The Euler characteristic is a topological description of a shape. It's essentially gives you the number of redundant loops in the structure. So something with a large negative Euler characteristic is something with lots of loops, something that's very well connected. And so the implication is, and we're still working on this, the implication is we have mixed wet systems. So we put oil into a rock, the wettability changes. Now we inject water. What we find at most of the interfaces, the water is pinned, it can't move. Right? So it's hinging on the surface. What we want to do is we want to minimize the interface area. So we end up with these oil water interfaces being what's known as minimal surfaces. And as displacement proceeds in some locations, these surfaces do sort of lurch forward and move and rearrange. But if it is a minimal surface, this Gaussian curvature is negative. And that implies, in fact, that the oil and water are both well connected in the pore space. In this catenoid example, you can imagine that one phase is going through the center of the catenoid and the other phase is on the other side. In this helicoid, again, you can imagine phases on both sides, both of which are connected. So this would imply that if we have mixed wet porous media, or in many circumstances, mixed wet porous media, the two phases are well connected. And that potentially is very good for oil recovery because it means that the oil can remain connected and can be displaced. And that is consistent with the measurements that we've made and that I've discussed in uh, previous videos. Simply going to leave it there. An interesting idea. We see in porous media what are approximately, not exactly, but approximately minimal surfaces. And this has a topological explanation that suggests that possibly this is the reason why you might see favorable oil recoveries. Thank you very much.